egg nucleus to ectoform embryo another one uh, another one joins with the two polar nuclear wall to form a 3n uh, stage known as endosperm endosperm is endosperm is, endosperm is the most common nutritive tissue for the developing embryo in angiosperms okay in gymnosperm it represents the female gametophyte whereas the female gametophyte is fight in uh, angiosperms differentiated before fertilization and is haploid the endosperm is the product of fertilization and success successfully triploid so we were discussing now to uh, that polar nucleus two uh, two nuclei will be there and one one uh, sperm will go on fuse with that so that it will be in a three n stage so endosperm is genetically uh, three nucleated so three n will be there after double fertilization the egg is called zygote and the fusion product of polar and the second male gamete is termed as primary endosperm nucleus so that is what uh, two polar nucleus and uh, one uh, one of the male gamete will fuse with that polar nuclear bud to form endosperm and primary uh, egg fuses with the uh, one of the male gametes is known as zygote so the only angio angiosperms that do not form endosperm are the members of the family archidaceae podostemaceae and uh, tapaceae so in within the angiosperm these are the exemptions the archidaceae family and podostemaceae family and uh, tapaceae family do not form endosperm depending upon its mode of development three types of endosperm have been recognized one is nuclear endosperm another one is cellular endosperm and the third one is calobial endosperm so cellular endosperm is largely restricted yeah endosperm means it is a outer covering of embryo no 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 not outer it will be inside so if you take coconut no yes if you could see coconut the whatever the edible portion is there no uh -huh. uh, that is endosperm so whatever we are eating in it endosperm that is endosperm basically so that will embryo and then so embryo means it will be in the bottom so uh, the attachment will be there no with the pore so okay. there is a line uh, one uh, one tail like structure will be there from that uh, that coconut is hanging no uh -huh. in that area so if have you ever seen a coconut with flower inside basically mm -hmm. people say no flower had come in coconut so we are feeling lucky like that no so sir. even even you can google it let me show you <laughs> Okay. I will see this. I have seen, sir. It is a yellow. Yeah. yellow Not a yellow. It is. It is. It is in white in color. Okay. No, no. That uh, flowers like greens are there. No. Also. Those are not the flowers. Okay. So screen. Good. One second. So, have you seen the notes uh, as today? No. Yes, sir. I have seen. Yeah, remaining notes also I will share. Okay. Uh, same as in P uh, PPT, or uh, if not, I'll make a PDF and I will share that notes. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Nice. 
Yeah, this one you can say no. This is the yes, embryo. Uh, it, uh, the tail will be there, no? That co co coconut. So there, this embryo will be there, smaller size. If it is uh, when it is developing, it will develop like this. And this white portion is there, no? Which is the edible part. That is endos endosperm. And the water also a part of endos endosperm only. So okay, in from, between that, it is embryo. Yeah, this is embryo. This is there, no? That is embryo, developed embryo, we can say. From that, uh, one, it's here. You can see my cursor, no? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, from this back side, uh, one tail like structure will uh, come up. That is, you can say, a premium or something. From that, this uh, new plant uh, this will come. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank yeah. you, sir. Ah, okay. So, so, nuclear endosperm. So in this type of endosperm, the division of the primary endosperm nucleus and a few subsequent nuclear divisions are not accomplished by wall formation. So in this type of endosperm, the division of primary endosperm nucleus and a few subsequent nuclear divisions are not accomplished by wall formation. So they are not related to wall uh, formation. This results in the condition where the central cell of the embryo sac has formed a few uh, few several thou thousand nuclei freely suspended in the sac. See, uh, what they are telling? So, in the uh, nuclear endosperm, what will happen? So, this uh, divisions are uh, there in the primary uh, endosperm. They are not uh, accomplished by the wall formation because they are not involved in the wall formation so that they will freely or forming many uh, nuclei inside after the different different cell divisions. Such, uh, such a condition of endosperm may persist until it is consumed by the developing embryo. So examples are like Procrea, uh, Lamanthus, and auxyl spores, or it may be become cellular at uh, later stages. When latter is the case, which is more common, the wall formation mostly Centripetal. So you can see here no? a free nuclear endosperm with embryo. So this endosperm is with different different uh, nucleus located to different different places. Mostly endosperm becomes completely cellular, but uh, the facial cell uh, cellulization occurs only around the embryo. So this is embryo. And this is the cellular endosperm. This is free nuclear zone where uh, this nucleus won't be present. So they are all uh, settled here on. Uh, in Lomatia, besides the main collagel osteorium, numerous single celled uh, finger shaped projections are present all over the endosperm. This increases the absorbing surface of the endosperm. You can see here now this is osteorium and this is uh, cell uh, projections, the finger, finger shaped projections are there. Okay. So this is the embryo. This is cellular endosperm with that. And the, after that, there will be hostile formation. So in Gravilia robusta, Presence of vermiform appendages at the collagen end of the endosperm is reported, in which collagen endosperm osteria remains free nuclear. So this is free nuclear osteria, and this is cellular endosperm, and this is embryo.
నెక్స్ట్ వన్ ఇస్ సెల్లార్ ఎండోస్పోమ్ so in the cellular uh, endosperm what will happen the free nuclear stage is option in the type of uh, in this type of endosperm development so every division of the primary endosperm nucleus is followed by a cell wall formation so that the endosperm is cellular from the beginning so in earlier what happened in nuclear endosperm so they are not involved in the cell wall formation so that they are freely uh, freely uh, uh, distributed so in cellular endosperm what will happen so they are uh, the division of the primary endosperm nucleus is followed by the cell wall formation so that the endosperm endosperm is cell uh, cellular from the beginning so the first division of the primary endosperm uh, nucleus is uh, transverse along with this the embryo sac also gets divided into two by a transfer walls in some the first division is vertical adox adoxa is example for that uh, in some of them uh, diagonal that is peperomia is example so this type of endo- endosperm formation is seen in uh, families like anonaceae borginaceae gentinaceae aristolochiaceae etc in some plants the first two or three divisions are transfer followed by the irregular divisions next one is helobial endosperm this type of endosperm development is intermediate to cellular and nu- uh, nuclear type so in uh, nuclear what will happen so they are free so uh, they are not involving cell wall formation in cellular endosperm they are involving in the uh, cell wall formation so here it is in between the two okay the primary endosperm nucleus divides in in situ after its it comes to the collagen end near the antipoles wall formation takes place producing a large microplayer and a smaller collagen chamber so the collagen chamber is densely cytoplasmic and deep staining before dividing the nucleus in the microplayer daughter cell moves away the first few divisions are essentially free nuclear wall formation is much delayed if at all it occurs so here you can see so the zygote is here okay so the formed zygote is here okay after this this is micropylar chamber is formed in between and this is the collagen chamber okay so what is happening here you can see it is not in the not exactly to the walls okay and uh, it is in between but it is not free free uh, free kind of so that's why it is in between to the nuclear and cellular endosperm now we'll move, move to unit 5 that is embryo after sir, fertilization sir na endosperm hostoria hostoria endosperm hostoria yeah. so endosperm occasionally produce special structures at the embryo sac pole so these uh, have morpho histological organizations distinct from the uh, remaining endosperm so i have so shown in the photo now the uh, finger like projections the, those are the hostoria okay. 
Okay. So, uh, if you can see this 30th page, Asteria in nuclear endosperm. So, free nuclear division in the collagen region after faster has regions are faster, hence the greater density of nucle nuclei and cytoplasm in this part. Polyploid nuclei are also formed in the rising division nuclei when some ad uh, adjacent spindle shows. So DNA control and metabolic uh, rate also increases due to this. Thus, the collagen part of considered hosteria in nature, the microplayer part is con uh, contrast and uh, purely organized with no hostile organization. Gonocytes are uh, so free from uh, leg uh, leguminosia, eucalyptaceae, and uh, potassium. Wait, I'll give you a little system for that. The process. See, basically, what are hostoria means? Hostoria are the extra structures which help uh, in the uptake of food to the uh, growing embryo. Okay. Yeah. Next we'll move to embryo. So after fertilization, the di the zygote divides and develops into the embryo. Okay. So when a male gamete and female gamete fuses, so it will form a zygote. That zygote goes several divisions and forms a embryo. The development of embryo is in dicots is different from the development of embryo in monocots. Okay. Five main types of embryo development were recognized by Maheshwari. Maheshwari is a scientist. In 1950, she recognized five different types of uh, embryo development in dicots, and they are <coughs> onagrid type, asteroid type, solenoid type, uh, karyophyllad type, and uh, sinopilad type. Once the egg cell is fertilized, the growing pollen tube uh, enters angiosper embryo sac and releases two sperm cells. One, sper one sperm fertilizes central cell and initiates endosperm. So here, one is fertilized with uh, this polar bodies to form endosperm, do uh, endosperm development. Okay, other sperm fertilizes egg to produce zygote. So another is this red, uh, here it is no blue color. So this red one are the sperm cells and this blue is the egg cell and this two are the polar nuclei. So one is forming with this. So this is uh, primary fertilization we can say. So that is forming endosperm and this one is the double, second one that is a double fertilization that is forming the zygote. So cell division soon follows creating the embryo. After a certain uh, number of cell divisions, this zygote is turning into the embryo. Even in a human body also, the egg and sperm fuses to form zygote. After many uh, divisions, it will form the embryo. You can say that blasto, blastocyst. So many cells will be there now. So they all are in uh, similar kind in plants also. So this is a real image of uh, ovules you can see inside it. So plants different from most animals in, in that em embryogenesis does not directly generate the tissues and organs of the adults. For example, angiosperm embryogenesis forms a rudimentary plant body, tip, uh, typically consisting of embryo, embryonic axis and two cotyledons. You can see that is what seed formation. In what in plants we can see the seed, but in uh, but animals you can see the baby directly. So this is what again given in a, uh, a diamet diagramic form. So this is the polar nuclei. So this is the egg cell. These are the synergids. These are the three antipolar cells. So this is the pollen tube. In the pollen tube, two cells are coming. So right, one is fusing with this, another one is fusing with this. So that is what is forming the zygote. One is one is forming the endosperm. <laughs> Structure and development of dicot embryo. Structure. A typically, dicot embryo has two embryonic uh, levels, sorry, leaves called cotyledons attached to an 
em embryal access you can see the dicotyledon because it is having two cotyledons that is that's why it is known as dicotyledon plants so the a short form you will call dicots so because of having two cotyledons in between the cotyledons you can see a small cumul <coughs> uh, will be there from that uh, you are you'll get the new first shoot origin so the embryonic shoot apex called cumul this uh, this development to the future shoot and the embryonic root axis is called radical this development to the future root so the part of axis above radical is called hypocotyl and below the cumul is called epicotyl right so this is what uh, dicotyled and uh, embryo development so the first division of the zygote is almost uh, always asymmetric uh, asymmetrical so uneven divisions and uh, and transfers to its long axis to produce a uh, small apical cell and a large basal bottom see so if it is a zygote the divisions are not equal so okay uh, apical part is uh, smaller than the basal part okay basal part is larger so that is what they are telling so here is uh, that uh, asymmetric and producing a small apical cell and a large basal cell fine the apical cell divides vertically and the basal cell divides transversely to form four cell stage see here what is happen you can see in 34 page also so that this has divide vertically so see this is divide divide like this and this is divide like this okay uh, epical cell divide vertically and basal cell divide horizontally yes it is stuck yes sir yes voice voice stuck not coming properly now also no sir okay so is it fine now mariam hello yes sir is it okay is it, uh, yeah so have you seen this uh, this, this one the, if it is a zygote so there is a asymmetric division will be there because unequal division will be there so after unequal division so first division is asymmetric and uh, there is unequal so it will form say small apical and a large basal portion after in next division this apical portion will uh, divides vertically and the basal portion divides horizontally to form four cell stage okay this structure is called as a pro embryo okay that is t shaped pro embryo okay so the upper three cells of the uh, pro embryo divides further uh, both by anticlinal and uh, periclinal divisions to form 32 cell stage okay it is you can say globular stage development of various organs of the embryo is known as organogenesis after that it will form different different the outermost layer of the globular pro embryo develops into a distinct layer called as dermatogen which forms a future epidermis so okay the inner cells of the upper region develops into the cotyledons and the plumule while the lower cells divide into the radicle okay so after this a certain divisions it is forming a cotyledon is forming caliopetal is forming plumule is here and let's see this is this forms see after this this forms a shoot at this radical and root can so they forms a at root portion this is uh, this is the dicotyledon so they after this uh, number of divisions 
it will forms a uh, primal uh, portion okay which will uh, which are uh, generates into a uh, shoot and this is the radical part that will uh, initiates into the root so you can say this is monocot embryo the monocot embryo has single large cotyledon called scutellum so the primal and radical are lateral in position so the primal is protected by a covering of leaf like structures called coleoptile so the primal is protected by the coleoptile so whereas this radical is protected by the root cap this is in uh, uh, monocots the such kind of uh, pro productions are not there in the dicots so in basically for monocots we can say take uh, grasp type of plants as example right so the first in division of zygote is public so asymmetric and transfer producing a small apical cell and the large basal wart same as the distribution is same as in dicot both cell divide again at right angle to to the first division forming four cell stage they, they formed an equal division one is a large one one is a small one after that they will form a uh, right angle means 90 degrees to which so forming four cell stage that is also known as pro embryo further divisions at different planes result in the formation of 16 cell and 32 cell pro embryo so this is uh, uh, after division it is forming to around 32 cells so development of various organs of the embryo is known as organogenesis occurs in 32 cell cell to pro embryo so from this only this organogenesis starts like the uh, primal and radical co coleoptile everything is formation is uh, starts here the cells lateral uh, uh, the cells of lateral apical region develop into a single cotyledon of the scutellum so below the scutellum primal and radical are developed the outer layer of cells develop into coleoptile root cap and corrosion so that is what so different after uh, different different cell division this lateral portion is there you now that is developing into the cotyledon and another one is uh, developing into the radical which are protective parts of the uh, of, so one is protect, uh, protecting primal and another one is protecting the radical which is uh, future forms into a root so plant embryogenesis begins with an asymmetric cell division resulting in a smaller apical and a larger basal part okay So this is a uh, what, diagrammatic image of dicotyledon plant. So how the, uh, so initially this uh, zygote uh, goes as asymmetric divisions, forms a two cells. One is basal, one is apical. After that, it divides and forms further 16 cell stage and early globular stage. This is late globular shape. This is transition shape. This is heart shaped uh, stage so we can say late heart shape and this is the seedling after germination that will form uh, two cotyledons and one root So these are the original images of microscopic images of different developmental stages, we can say. Uh, in many angiosperms, development of the embryo is arrested soon after meristems 
and cotyledon di uh, differentiating the um, integuments development into the relatively uh, impermeable seed coat so this en uh, this enclose the seed with the your dormant. voice is not coming properly see what happens see this is what ultimately uh, after this, uh, several divisions there is a formation of seed so that is what in many angiosperm development of the embryo is arrested soon after uh, meristems and cotyledon differentiate so the two cotyledon formation is there no? after that the, the cells will get uh, uh, embryos get arrested the development of the embryos arrested so that when the favorable conditions so forms like if when you soak the seeds so the seed coat is a little uh, uh, what we can say it will little get uh, thinner and uh, it will activate it so that the embryo dot germination occurs from that so germination is not a part of us so we'll skip this next we'll go to We'll move to our last uh, topic of this session is pollenology. So the term pollenology was first introduced by Hedy and Williams in 1944. The word pollenology is uh, derived from the Greek word polono means uh, sprinkle and pale means dust, which is cognated with Latin word pollen, both living uh, as well as fossils. Pollenology can be defined as the study of spores and pollen grains. So basically, as of now, we have seen embryo, monocot and dicot embryo. We have seen uh, what, uh, pollination or fertilization kind of things. No? Now we are going to study a little uh, deep about pollen grains and their morphology, how they appear and all. So pollenology means pollenous dust is a science of pollen grains and spores. Pollen grains are male gametophytes or reproductive cells of the flowering plants. So these are the microscopic images of pollen grains. A, a, a typical pollen grain of an sperm. So it is little globular in shape. So this is tube set. Uh, Cell cytoplasm. This is a green, light green color one is a cytoplasm. This is the tube cell nucleus. This is exon. This is intine. This is generative cell, and this is apparatus. Cytoplasm, nucleus, uh, intine, and exon. This is germ pore. Pollen grain consists of a hard outer layer that is known as exin and uh, an inner softer wall is known as intine, which encloses encloses the cytoplasm with its cell nuclei and organelles. So you can see this uh, red one is the exin and this uh, black color line is the intine, and this is the generative cell. So this exin and intine are covering this uh, cytoplasm. This uh, green spot is there, no? That cytoplasm. A pollen grain contains the male gamete of the angiosperm plants. Pollen has two functions, reproduction and reward of visitors. The outer layer of pollen and spores often contains a special compounds, that is sporopollen, which resist degradation by various chemicals, bacteria and fungus. So that will this poropollenian 
is there no that is protects this pollen grain sir uh, what is reward of visitors reward of visitors means that uh, color uh, when you touch this pollen uh, pollen means uh, visitors means the uh, they will come no butterflies and all okay yeah the when they are coming that uh, small not colorish compounds will go no but uh, this is not exactly a term uh, reward of visitors so they are helping the uh, spreading of pollen grains okay so we can say uh, the whatever the color uh, the attraction will be there no to attract the bees and pollen grains in that context they told like this. okay so the outer layer of the pollen and spores often contain the special compounds so which we are discussed now so they'll protect from the various chemicals and bacteria from this pollen the pollen wall is digested to protect the sperm nucleus from uh, desiccation and irradiation during the transport of from the anther to the stigma so this uh, this pollen walls together with this uh, exin and dentin no so the wall is digested to protect the sperm nucleus so they will digest and they'll uh, uh, they'll form a tube like structure and they'll help in protect, uh, protection of this generative cells so pollen grains are come in a wide variety of shapes most of them are uh, spherical uh, different variety of uh, shapes sizes and surface markings characteristics of this species see here here itself you can see so these are all the what microscopic what we can say this is fluorescent microscopic images of the pollen grains so there are different uh, sizes different shape and uh, you can say surface marker different type of surface markers you can say here it is like uh, sharp projections are there here you can say some small small circular things are there so they are like low bud kind of things are there okay so their size shape uh, everything varies so so plant species to plant species pollen is used in phylogenetic analysis it can be utilized in plant identification even extant plants and fossil plants also um, paleo pollinology or uh, paleo botany so past plant communities climate bi biography and image so this pollinology is used to identify the plants also because each plant species uh, is uh, having different uh, type of structure or morphology morphologically different so the, the this differentiation is help uh, will help in the identification of plants also even if some fossils are there you no know, if we can get the pollen grains of the fossils we can identify that the morphology of pollen grains from the basis basic criteria for the identification the uh, pollinological features of the spore or pollen grain can often be used to identify a particular taxon the pollen data provides information of changes in vegetation climate and human distribution of terrestrial ecosystem so by observing this pollen morphology we can identify which uh, particular plants and we can identify the uh, climatic changes and uh of different vegetation around that place the pollen analysis the sediments are collected pollen grains are isolated from the sediment mix mixture uh, via chemical treatment isolated pollen grains are mounted onto a glass slide and uh, and they are identified and quantified under the microscopy see if i as i told you fossils also can be identified so so from the sediments sediments in the water also they can collect and we can study the pollen grains of that pollinological features used in plant systematics as pollen nuclear uh, nucleus member pollen storage products pollen units pollen polarity pollen apparatus pollen size pollen shape uh, pollen scroll put puncturing and pollen wall structures this is binucleated versus versus trinucleated binucleated versus trinucleated pollen grains
so what is the storage food in the pollen grains that is starch some of them are having starch some of them are having oil in their storage food so that that will help the uh, gametophyte that is microspore to reach the egg so pollen unit refers to the number of pollen grains united together at the time of release monad means single unit single unit are unfused pollen grains example majority of angiosperm majority of angiosperms are sing the uh, monad are single uh, nucleated so this is high viscous uh, and this is uh, nifa fruticans so they are single and their shape is different you can see this is little circular and this is little uh, egg shaped So there is a NPC system of uh, characterization will be there for this pollen operators and all. So NPC means number, position, and character of operators of pollen, operators, and pollen. Number means uh, the NPC, ref uh, NPC refers to number, position, and character of uh, operators in pollen genes. In this system, terms uh, terms uh, terms has been used in place of operators for classification of pollen grains. Pollen grains without operators are called atrium and uh, represented as number. So number. What is apparatus?
so apparatus can be defined as a thin area in the exin okay so the outer layer is there no okay so, yeah that is uh, that is called as a apparatus so their structure shapes are, will be different so based on that the nomenclature has been given like np system apparatus sorry uh, that is apparatus or apertures i think i think that is a small pores like yeah aperture yes uh, aperture so sorry uh, apertures uh, okay sir uh, aperture it is an uh, weak area uh, on the pollen surface which is directly or indirectly associated with the germination so the aperture may be simple or compound pollen with simple aperture are either col colpate uh, with colpi long aperture or portate with pores some compound uh, compound apertures consist of uh, central region called oral and outer region called colpal including pollen and polar with compound pores pollen grains uh, orientation there will be uh, polar orientation or equatorial orientation will be there so this ap apertures are like um, porate having pores colpi having uh, slits Uh, corporate uh, pores inside slits, uh, sulcate having thinned walls, saccate uh, having air bubbles. So pollination. Uh, pollen on uh, left are uh, wind borne, uh, anom anomophilus, and pollen on right are the uh, insect borne, so entomophilus. So. Uh, <laughs> NPS is an artificial system of classification of pollen and spore based on three uh, features of apertures, number, position, and character. According to NPS system, each pollen has arithmetic number consisting of three digits. The N denotes the number of apertures present on the pollen grain. Pollen grain, pollen having aperture has uh, pollen having apertures are divided in, into seven groups. They are mentioned N one to N seven. Each group has a uh, has a characteristic number of aperture. For example, N one has a one aperture, N two has two apertures, as N seven has more apertures. So if it is having one is more uh, more trim. Uh, if it is two tritrim, three uh, tritrim, uh, four tetratrim, five penta, seven hexa, and uh, sorry, six hexa, and seven poly. So the uh, trima in a Greek means hole or opening. So there are pollen grains where uh, apertures are absent. Such pollen grains are called as in aperture or atrium. So you can see here, here uh, no aperture, this atrium. This is mono, di, tri, tetra, penta, hexa, and poly. So he same he made there in your this forty fifth page. Another special group, a any eight termed as a anomotor anomotorin is treated where pollen grains have one or several irregular. Space apertures, classification based on position. Yeah. So based on position, the classification has based on number one classification is there, and based on position, one classification is there. This is cata. This is ana cata. This is ana jono. Panto and uh, deca jono. So you can see if it is at, at the bottom, this is cata. This is Uh, two around, two around, arranged one opposite to another. That is anacata. So one is if it is above, that is ana. If they are arranged in the um, uh, middle, that is jono. That is arranged in a uh, uh, two sets. That di jono. If that is arranged uh, all over the plane, is the uh, panto.
if you take this applied palynology so we will go over this uh, see the summary so applied palynology the branch of palynology deals with the applications of uh, spores and pollen grains in the various disciplines of science like geology climatology biology botany algology apiculture uh, plant breeding plant physiology uh, phyto geography agriculture plant evolution plant taxonomy new uh, neurobiology and oceanography so this palynology has different different applications in different uh, uh, branches of science known as like geology climatology biology botany algology apiculture plant breeding so by using this what uh, by taking pollen grains as a standard so uh, this uh, but in uh, in this geology climatology we can study different aspects so those are the applications of this palynology uh, pollen grains show a great variety in the size and in their size smallest angiosperm pollen grain of uh, mysotes polistes are measured about 5 into 10 point sorry 2.4 microns only so they are the smallest pollen grains in the universe when the largest pollen grains are met in the borgiaceous members like mirabilis jellaba so that is corocla plant will be there so where it is uh, 200 micrometers so aeroplane algae deals with the study of uh, dispersal spores and pollen grains in the atmosphere uh, pelitopelan algae deals with the study of pollen grains present in the various honey uh, honey produced in honey bees okay may not be 100% but almost we touched all parts of our syllabus so uh, in that group you can share that uh, what else you want to know for uh, which which subject you uh, which topic you want notes so you can just share me so that i'll start i'll share the uh, respective notes for that okay some important questions also yeah yeah i'll 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 try to get the whole paper so from that we can select some important question and i'll prepare good notes for that also okay Thank if you, you have any further doubt you can contact me okay you can leave okay, good luck thank you sir okay bye <laughs> Uh, sir if you are having notes related to floriculture uh, that also you can share yeah, yeah sorry i i forgot that floriculture right let me note it down yes, okay i'll try to share you there floriculture yes sir thank you okay. so much sir <laughs> thank you ma'am bye take care any uh, if you have any doubts you can uh, ping me there i'll try to answer from that okay sir okay, okay.